My name is Kent Goshorn, and I'm fixing up uh, my wife's family's old adobe here in Dixon. Uh, in the summer of 69, after a couple of years uh, living on Haight Street in a Santa Cruz commune, I, I turned 18. Some Berkeley radicals helped me change my identity because I was determined not to go to Vietnam, uh, which I would have. My number was called a year later. I was sitting there in Berkeley trying to decide whether to stay for the Altamont Rock concert <laughs> and kind of tired of selling newspapers on the street, the Berkeley Barb and whatnot, to make enough to live on. And I said, I want to go out to New Mexico and find my friends at Morningstar Commune. And the people there at the house said, let's go. So four people hopped in a little VW bug and headed to New Mexico. We went through the Four Corners and the Navajo Reservation on the way, the much more scenic route, and seeing those adobe and wood hogans and grazing sheep all around was a revelation to me. It really turned me on to see that this kind of architecture and this kind of a way of living still existed here in the United States. We got to Taos late at night, stopped at the A&W for something to eat, and said, where's the hippies? And the car hop said, well, why don't you go to the bar on the plaza? They'll know. So we found uh, Jason from Morningstar, and he gave us directions. And somehow, in the dark, we found our way up to the Mesa. Then and there, my friends dumped my stuff on the ground and turned around and drove back to California. It was deserted, so it seemed, and it was really cold. I found uh, the remnants of a campfire, and I took those coals, and I spread them out on the ground about the length of my body and left them there for half an hour or so. Then I swept them aside, and I lay down on that warm ground to get me through the night until daybreak, whereupon I asked uh, for my friends, and they said, well, go see Alley Cat Bapook down there at Dog Patch in the canyon. So I went over to the canyon and left my sleeping bag and my pack on the rim and went down to Bapook and got directions to Dixon, where my friends now had a house. I got back to the top, and my pack was torn open by some hungry dogs, and scattered all around on the ground there was my country canola, and what was left of the 20 or so blue barrels of acid I'd brought with me. And for some reason, I just thought how pretty those little blue pills looked on that red dirt next to the sagebrush. I don't know what happened to all those dogs, though. Well, I went to Dixon and found my friends, but oddly enough, as nice as it was in the mild weather and the benign surroundings, it was not challenging enough. We, for some reason, wanted to be mountain men. Well, a friend of a friend had a ranch in Montana in the Rockies, and we decided that's where we needed to go, and we would go, and we would never come back. But we needed tools and shovels and a year's supply of food, and, oh yeah, we needed a truck, not to mention money. Across the way, there lived this guy we called the Texan in an old adobe. So we told him our predicament, and he said, Well, boys, you need you a truck, and I need me a septic tank hole, Doug. Tell you what, you dig me a six by eight by six hole over there and I'll give you this 52 Studebaker. So we dug through that rock and frozen caliche in the middle of the winter and we got our truck. While the Texan was saying things like, you keep swinging a pick like that and you'll get dead babies. But we got that Studebaker on the road, push started it all the way out to California up the west coast and uh, over to Montana on a three-month caravan that grew to about 12 or 15 people at some point. But we never found that ranch in Montana. So about then, New Mexico was starting to look pretty good. Why did we ever leave in the first place? We landed back in Moore County, and we stayed at a commune in Guadalupita. These guys named Head and Dave sort of took us under their wing. They were older and more experienced fellows. A couple months later, as we returned from Taos one evening, we learned that there had been some big trouble at the commune the night before. A bunch of men had kidnapped some people and raped and beaten and such and vowed to keep it up until we were all gone. Well, we got back, and as we prepared for whatever was coming, we suddenly heard shots down below. A minute later, someone came running up and said they shot Meditating Michael. we got to go find him. Dave handed me a 30-30 rifle and said, are you ready to use this thing if you have to? I said, yep. And he said, well, let's go find Michael in the dark. I thought momentarily of the irony of it all, not going to Vietnam, but now suddenly stumbling around in the dark with a rifle ready to shoot somebody, yelling whatever Spanish we could muster to assess whether anyone was still down there around that might cause us trouble. 
Well, next morning I saw Michael lying dead in the ground, and we knew it was time to leave. Well, myself and a couple friends, we went up to San Luis, Colorado to find work north of Costilla. I learned to work on trucks and got a caretaking gig on a big ranch where we had put up hay before. 250 acres of lush grass right under the Calabria Peaks with a river running through it. Who should show up one day but the Banditos, a sort of gypsy hippie outlaw band on horses who asked if they could stay a while. I couldn't really say no. But who else should show up the next day? The ranch owner. What the hell are all these hippies and horses doing in my hayfield? You're out of here. One bandito stayed behind with me as we prepared to ride up to the Huerfano. Didn't know where else to go. I went over to fetch my last milk goat that had strayed over to the neighbors. Hey, Bobby, you got my goat? I guess the stars were just crossed that week. Yeah, I got your goat right here on a rope. And he pulled off a sawed-off shotgun and shot the goat out of my hand, put the gun in my face and said, start running. I ran. I won't go into all that, but I still felt, why leave New Mexico? Why leave the valley? So I stayed on there in San Luis a couple more years. Well, fast forward 20-some years later. While in grad school, I was visiting out here in New Mexico, and I met a woman who, as it turned out, was from Dixon, New Mexico. And we started living together, and one day she said, you know, I want to go back to Dixon and find my family's house. My, my grandparents built an adobe up in the hill over there somewhere, and that's where they raised my mother and had uh, eight children, while Grandpa went off and herded sheep. I want to find that place. And I said, well, yeah, great, let's go, and I'll show you where I lived. So we came out here one summer, and I showed her the house where I had lived, which had since burned down and been rebuilt. And she said, you know, I think this is pretty close to where our family house was. And we saw an old woman uh, sitting on the porch across the way, so we went and talked to her. And Olympia told her the situation. She said, oh, yes, I remember your family, you know, Raitos and Juan and Anibal, and they built the house over there. Sure, it's right over on the other side of that white trailer over there. So we went over there, and I'd kind of forgotten the terrain and all that over the ensuing years. We crept over there, had to walk through the neighbor's place, and we're looking at this old, boarded-up, run-down, decaying adobe house, but it was still intact, and we're peeking in the windows best we can. And as I come around the far corner of the house, I look down, and there's a big hole. And I said, holy crap, that's the hole that my buddies and I dug about 30 years before. This looks like some unfinished business. If this was your family's house and I worked on it here, we've got to have this place. Took a couple years, but I tracked down the owner. We managed to buy the place back, started fixing it up. I've been working on it ever since. We're probably less than a year from finally uh, moving back in. And I've got to say, I've never felt as at home and as just as much at home in my own skin as I have up there in that house on that hill.